So should or should not the United States plunge into World War III over Taiwan? Hello, welcome to Dangerous Policy, a channel aimed at intelligent people wanting to discuss important issues facing life and society. My name is Chris Ben, and today I want to talk about the inflection point uh, that we're currently at with America's relationship to Taiwan. So for those that, that don't know the history, um, back in 1945, the obviously the Japanese were defeated, the occupation of China was ended, and uh, there were two main factions vying for control. There was the nationalist government under Chiang Kai-shek and a communist movement under Mao Zedong. Now, obviously, after a four-year bloody civil war, uh, the communists took over all of mainland China and declared the People's Republic of China. Meanwhile, the nationalists fled to uh, a little island off the coast of China called Taiwan, and they were actually preparing to even pack up from there and leave because they were thought that an invasion was imminent to kick them out from, from the communists. That would have happened if it wasn't for the American 7th Fleet being put into Taiwan Strait to prevent that from happening. So the Americans effectively interrupted the Chinese Civil War to prevent the complete destruction of their um, friend, the nationalists, under uh, Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan, um, because, of course, they were in a new Cold War with the Soviet Union, at which at that time Mao Zedong was a loyal Moscow ally. Uh, so that kind of set the scene for, for that time. Now, incidentally, uh, at, uh, the, on the United Nations Security Council, it was the Taiwanese government that was the uh, representative. And for a long time, the United States recognized the government of Taiwan as the legitimate government of all of China. Uh, and that incidentally is why in the Korean War, um, it was the North Koreans and the Chinese against the United Nations because um, on the Security Council, the communist government in China was not included and the Soviet Union at the time was boycotting the Security Council because of what uh, or because of China's exclusion. Um, so that's why you know we, we had a, a security resolution in which the Korean War had these blue blue hats, but were mostly or well, you know American soldiers and their allies. Uh, so this has created a kind of a, a permanent um, fixture. Now when relations with Beijing normalized uh, under um, President Nixon and beyond, um, there was a deal a treaty signed between the United States and Taiwan in 1979, I believe, um, that guaranteed an alliance between Taiwan and the United States, wherein if Taiwan was attacked, the US would respond. This was kind of a way to ensure Taiwanese uh, autonomy while the embassy was moved from Taipei to Beijing and that the Beijing government was recognized as the legitimate government of China. That was kind of the deal. Now, since then, um, Taiwan has been a strategic fixture of American uh, supremacy in West Asia. Um, for a long while, it was uncontested uh, and it was seen as like a permanent aircraft carrier right off the coast of Shanghai. Um, this was a, you know, an amazing strategic asset for the United States, key part of the first island chain between sort of that includes um, Japan and Taiwan. Uh, and then the second island chain to support that, you know, Hawaii, Guam, um, and, and that sort of thing, you know, Australia. Uh, and so the, you know, it, it concentric circles of, of strategic control. So very important for, for the United States. Um, if Taiwan was to be reincorporated into the mainland, uh, then you would have uh, Chinese strategic forces being able to push out to the Pacific, um, which would be, you know, terribly detrimental for the United States, particularly operating in the South China Sea. Um, so there are direct strategic implications of uh, incorporation of Taiwan back into China. But from Chinese perspective, they still see Taiwan as a um, basically a rebellious province and an integral part of China, that they're, they're viscerally emotional about any kind of movement towards Taiwanese independence and, and a sense of hatred towards the United States for intervening in what they see as their internal affairs. So from the Chinese point of view, 
um, American involvement in Taiwan is is totally illegitimate, and the Chinese have make it perfectly clear that if Taiwan was to do something radical like declare independence, then China would in fact invade. Now we can basically guarantee at this point that at some time in the future, within the next ten to twenty years, at at the outset. China is going to demand Taiwan reintegrate with China. Like we see, the um, they've already broken the deal with the UK over over Hong Kong, um, basically incorpor- reincorporating uh, Hong Kong into mainland China. A, a good um, you know fifty years, oh, so twenty five years before the before it was ever due, and then you have Taiwan, which should never be reincorporated into China based on the treaties that have been agreed. Um, China has said, look, no. Taiwan can can reintegrate peacefully, um, or they can reintegrate by force, but they will reintegrate. Uh, and the United States has now got to decide whether or not this is the flashpoint in which um, they would actually have this hostility that leading to to major power war. Now, there's a there's a group of people in the United States who have said, look, they have to guarantee Taiwanese security because. Um, if they don't, then the other U.S. allies will think uh, that they can't rely on American security guarantees, um, and therefore, if the loss of Taiwan means the loss of Japan, loss of Australia, loss of the Philippines, and so on, well, that's not true. That part is not true. Most countries in the world see Taiwan as a special case. They see that what China's policy is to Taiwan does not necessarily reflect a policy towards the rest. Of um, of the independent sovereign nations, nor do they necessarily see that American concessions on Taiwan would mean concessions for their own security. Uh, I mean, most countries would feel more comfortable if there was a peaceful solution to the Taiwan question, even if it meant, to an extent, a degree of um, uh, of infidelity with the U.S. alliance on, on that on that regard. Now. That would have been a pre-COVID attitude, I would say. And this other, something's happened quite that has, that has reshaped this whole question, uh, and that is that until COVID, uh, we had uh, every political leader around the world had an inherited a dependency on China. That is that their trade relationship with China was huge and increasing. Any notion that um, increased uh, economic trade and liberalization would lead to a political change in China had been already proven false. Uh, and most people were just like, well, we just have to live with it. You know, we, we have a deep, ingrained, increasing economic trade relationship with China. Most countries say China sees Taiwan as part of China. Um, there is historical truth to that. Ergo, um, we're not going to intervene when China does ultimately reincorporate Taiwan into the mainland or, or even necessarily be particularly critical. I think that would have been the, the general global view. But with the with the ceasing of global supply chains, the disease coming out of China and the, the whole world shutting down, people thinking about where their products and services come from and now no longer inheriting a relationship with China but actually making a conscious decision as to whether or not they want to engage with the Communist Party on, on the same historical level or whether they want to you know, re- decide that their economic interests should align with their political interests and values. Uh, that's, a, that's an inflection point that we are currently at that leaders are not of this generation have ever faced. And what's put front and centre here is, is the Taiwan question because if we say that no, we are not going to deal with the CCP in the way that we have in the past, that the CCP is there to, to crush human rights of its own people, um, everyone's living under a dystopian uh, social credit system, they, they are uh, violating the rights of the people of Hong Kong, they're interning people in mass uh, internment camps in, uh, of the Uyghur population, um, that you don't have freedom of expression, people are being um, uh, arrested arbitrarily, that there's no independent judiciary, and therefore we do not want the Chinese system to become the dominant power in global affairs to reshape the global order. Well, that that's something that is going to come with an economic cost, and therefore the question over Taiwan gets revisited. They're like, well, okay, if that is the attitude that we have, then we should double down on our alliance with Taiwan um, in order to contain the expansion of the Chinese state. This is something that 
um, ha- uh, Richard Haas has now articulated, well, not, not in this way, but Richard Haas has um, argued in a, a recent article in Foreign Affairs who uh, says we should make, uh, we as in the Americans, should make our commitment to Taiwan unambiguous, right? That previously um, the message was status quo. We don't want anything to change arbitrarily. We don't want Taiwan to declare independence in a way that would force or conflict, nor do we want China to use force to force Taiwan into the mainland. But if it can be done peaceably, the Americans won't interfere. That was kind of the the previous message. Well, um, now uh, it, the question should be, if Taiwan declares independence, should we um, should we militarily support that act, right? Should we actually encourage the Taiwanese government to do that and should we be there for them, should they do that? Now, this is an interesting thing because Richard Haas is a is a renowned globalist who I've disagreed with on, on a whole range of issues and I think he would have been in the previous ambiguity camp. Um, but this is a his shift is something that is emblematic of, I think, many others um, who now go, well, all right, if... The mission now is to compete on a global scale with China. Then the first flashpoint of, of is going to be Taiwan for for sure. And is that the marker of which um, we start World War Three? Now, this is um, also a serious military question because it's not certain that this could be done. Right? Like Taiwan is not very far from the Chinese coast. Um, China is spending years and decades to deal with this contingency to make it, you know, very difficult, if not impossible, for the United States and others to intervene should there be a conflict over Taiwan. Um, would it even be militarily possible to defend Taiwan should that be the case? Well, what can be said is that the status quo would not work, right? Like at the moment, what happens is Taiwan buys some sort of second rate fighter planes from the United States. The U.S. symbolically sells these these, um, military gear to Taiwan to demonstrate their um, kind of ongoing support for Taiwan. China puts out platitudes of, of, um, you know, of protest. But it's not like the United States has put massive bases like they have in Okinawa or, or Diego Garcia or anything like that in Taiwan, right? It's not like they have their own skin in the game. And I think if if a political decision is made in the United States that, yes, they're going to, to make sure that the Taiwanese people have um, independence going forward, then the US is going to have to put that that level of commitment, a military commitment. And that would be enormously provocative to China, right? That that Chinese may even choose to respond to that militarily. That the other side of the argument, though, is that one thing that the Chinese propagandists always say is that only the Chinese Communist Party can protect Chinese culture, Chinese territorial integrity, and the custodians of the Confucian ideal, right? Well, the existence of Taiwan pro- disproves that completely, right? Like the, the Taiwan is a Confucian society. It's traditionally Chinese. In fact, they all use old Chinese characters in their writing and everything. They're, in fact, in many ways more traditionally Chinese than, than many parts of mainland China. Uh, and yet they are a vibrant, lively democracy um, with the rule of law, with independent judiciary, with liberal um, uh, mechanisms of commerce. Uh, and so it... it it's a sheer existence shows what China could be, right? And so preserving that is an important ideological as well as military objective of the United States. Now, I have myself shifted on this issue. I had previously thought that there would just simply not be enough support among US allies or even domestically within the United States to defend Taiwan, right? The reason for that is the Americans were always fixated with Europe and the Middle East, obsessed with Russia and Iraq, and uh, and therefore this island off the coast of China uh, seemed absolutely beyond their scope of interest, uh, an island that is traditionally, you know, Chinese and very close to China. Why would they? Why would they care about that? They don't even recognize it as a country. Uh, and then you have these U.S. allies who um, would not be forcefully putting forward the message that, oh, you have to demonstrate to Taiwan your seriousness to, for, so we feel secure. Most countries in West Asia, um, in fact, if not all, kind of thought, well, yeah, Taiwan's a special case. If Taiwan gets you know, forcibly brought into mainland China, 
um, we'll just continue trading with China, <laughs> um, and uh, and and we don't necessarily assume that that is a direct threat to uh, our sovereignty or a signal from the United States of a lack of commitment to its you know actual allies. Um, that that's a kind of fallacious argument. But now I think that the there is actually more at stake in that in that space because. Um, because the United States has been so vocally anti-China, so staunchly like going to compete with with the Chinese Communist Party, if the Americans stood by and did nothing with Taiwan, that would be a humiliation uh, that would be quite stark in comparison to um, the rhetoric, right? So uh, the the American sense of credibility is more on the line there, and I think Western allies are paying more attention to this than they have in the past, and then also. Um, uh, the fears among these Western allies uh, is also increasing about China and therefore um, a reincorporation of Taiwan into the mainland would only increase that threat further. The Americans should vocally change the game, put the, the Chinese in an incredibly difficult position. Now, this is incredibly dangerous and provocative. Plenty of people will disagree with me, but, but it reflects, you know, I think the, the, uh, an increasingly mainstream attitude. The US should declare that they recognize Taiwan as an independent country, right? Now, that could easily start a war, but that um, would put China in an invidious position. Either they back down completely, um, which they might have to do because they're not yet militarily strong enough to take on the United States in that way, um, or um, they do lash out before they're ready and that greatly weakens their ability to... Um, to in the long term overtake the United States as the and inherit the earth, um, it, it's. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not without attendant risks. Um, it, it definitely is, but it would preserve Taiwan's independence, prevent you know 25 million people being forcibly reincorporated into a communist dictatorship, uh, guarantee American fidelity in in the Western Pacific to its allies and sincerity in taking on China, uh, and really crystallize in the minds of all these other countries which side they're going to be on, right? Because if the Americans declare that Taiwan is independent, right, then everyone in the world has to choose a side. They, they, they can't just sit there idly and be like, oh, we don't, you know, we hope everyone discusses it. No, you will have to continue to trade with China as it is and thereby effectively saying you don't support the United States. Or you say, all right, we are morally, ethically, culturally, ideologically aligned to the United States. Ergo, we're going to interrupt our commercial agreement. Yes, it'll make us poorer, but it will help preserve the Western liberal ideal. So I, I do think the Americans should do something bold with Taiwan. Um, I, it's incredibly risky, and I, I'm, I do this with my eyes open. Um, but if you let it peter out, if you, if you let this moment pass, where everyone just goes back to trading as they were and the dependency just increases, um, then America will, will wither in the Western Pacific. Then they need to change the game. Now, that's my view. Um, do let me know your own opinions. Um, it, it's a definitely a contested space. I will leave a link in the description to the article from Richard Haas on Foreign Affairs. I think it's quite influential at the moment. Uh, and uh, um, if you found value in this, please like and subscribe. We do discuss this issue very frequently. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.